Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Miss Glow Glow Motivation. I'm back here with another video for you guys. And this is a motivational Wednesday video. I'm back. And uh, today we're going to be reading from Ecclesiastic, the 12th chapter. Y'all know Ecclesiastic is one of my favorite, entire favorite parts of the Bible. Let me move y'all a little closer just so y'all can hear me. One of my very important part of the Bible to me, I love it, it's one of my favorite. Ecclesiastes 12 is telling us how to remember God when we are young, how to call on God when we are not when we are young and not just wait till we get old, because when we get old, we can't do any work. So let's go ahead and read it. We're going to read it first from the, um, the English version, and then we're going to read it from the King James Version, and that's just because... I want everybody to get an understanding of what this word is saying, okay? Y'all, excuse me. I just got my hair wrapped down. I ain't do nothing special to it. I got my apple cider vinegar and lemon juice water, which is almost gone, but it's good. And um, I got everything else here I need. So if I kind of seem a little distracted today, don't uh, worry about it. I'm okay. I'm blessed. I'm happy. I'm at peace. I'm, I'm just I'm just happy. And, uh, but, um, I want y'all to keep my daughter in y'all prayers. So just continue to lift my family up in prayers. Let's get into this work. First, let's say a word of prayer. Forgive me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I want to thank you once again for blessing me to live to see a brand new day, one that I have never seen before. I thank you, God, for watching over me while I slept and slumbered and allowing me to raise up off of my bed and see this beautiful, blessed day today. I thank you for each and every member of my family, and I ask that you continue to cover all of them in the blood of Jesus. Continue to wrap your love and arms around them. Continue to shield God and protect them, Lord. I ask that you protect, bless, and keep all of my grandkids and my great-grandkids saved and covered in the blood. I want to thank you and give a special shout-out to my pastor for allowing me to live to come and dwell in her house. I just thank you, God, for the love that's in her heart. And it's been like that way ever since I know her. It's not like this is a new thing. She's just a loving person all the way around. Father God, I ask that you protect her family, every member of them, her kids, her grandchildren, her mother, sisters and brothers, all of them in the blood of Jesus. And Lord, I ask that you bless all of my YouTube subscribers, their families, their friends. Just bless them all in a special way and protect them. Keep us all safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. In Jesus Christ's name. And God, I ask that as we begin to study your word, Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, I ask right now, God, that you forgive us for all of our sins. Anything that we've done that can hinder us from getting the full wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word, we ask that you remove it right Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, and I ask that you open up our minds, open up our spiritual ears, and give us a heart and a mind to receive what your word is saying to us. And God, and then I ask that you order our steps and direct our path in your word. Because God, your word said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And we ask him that you be the greater that is in us than we ourselves. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Covered by the blood. So, yes, I want to read. I'm going to go here right, get right into it because I don't want this to be a super long video. I'm sitting on the floor, and this is actually one of my gifts. Let me show you all these gifts. I think I showed them to y'all before. These are two of the gifts my pastor have already gotten me for my home. Uh, uh, for home, when I get in my house, show y'all this. This is a crock pot slow cooker. Very nice. And this is another one. You see that pot set? Very nice. So I just wanted to show y'all them. But let's get into this word. Because it ain't about this materialistic stuff. It's all about the word of God. It's about the word of God. And I hope that one is not too light for y'all. I lost my page. But we're going to get right back to it. Uh, and I lost my page. I hate that I lost my page. Ecclesiastic. We are at the 12th chapter of Ecclesiastics 12. Yeah. Ecclesiastic 12. So let's begin reading. 
Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, starting at the first verse, and it reads as thus, Keep your Creator in mind while you are young. In years to come, you will be burdened down with troubles and say, I don't enjoy life anymore. Talking about when you get old, you know, when you get old, you're going to say you, you gonna say you don't like life anymore. So God wants you to work and give him time while you are in your youth, while you can still work. And then it says, some day the light of the sun and the moon and the stars will all seem dim to you. Rain clouds will remain over your head. Your body will grow feeble. Your teeth will decay and your eyesight will fail. The noisy grinding of grain will be shut in by, the, by your deaf ears. But even the song of a bird will keep you awake. You will be afraid to climb up a hill I walk down the road. Your hair will turn as white as almond blossoms, and you will feel lifeless and drag along like an old grasshopper. With each go to we each go to our eternal home, and the streets are filled with those who mourn. The silver cord snaps and the golden bowls break. The water pitcher is smashed and the pulley at the well is shattered. So our bodies return to the earth, and the life-giving breath returns to God. Nothing makes sense. I have seen it all. Nothing makes sense. Then it says, verse 9, I, we, I was a wise teacher with much understanding, and I collected a number of proverbs that I had carefully studied. Then I tried to explain these things in the best and most accurate way. The words of wisdom are like the stick a farmer used to make animals move. These saying comes from God, our only shepherd. And they are like nails that fasten things together. My child, I want you to stay away from any teachers, any teachings except these. There is no end to books. And too much to study. It says there is no end to books. And too much to study will wear you out. Everything you were taught can be put into a few words. Respect and obey God. This is what life is all about. God will judge everything we do. Even what is done in secret. Whether good or bad. I just read to you Psalms, I mean, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. And this chapter was talking about keeping God in your mind while you are young. Because when you get old, he said you're going you to say you ain't enjoying life no more. Okay? So, and then when he got to the name verse, he started telling us about how to respect and obey God. This is very simple teaching. Okay, that's why the word tells us, that's why in the Bible it says the word is so clear that even a fool cannot err at it when you're reading this word of God. It is so clear. All you have, you don't want those, the Bible said those who lack wisdom, let them understand. Let them ask. So if you lack wisdom, seek God for it and he'll give it to you. Now, if we read out of the King James Version, Ecclesiastes 12, starting at the first verse, it reads as thus. Open your ears, guys, so that you can hear what the Spirit is saying to you through this word. And open your mind to receive. And ask God to put within you, as I read these words, a spirit of discernment. In the name of Jesus, Father God, right now, everybody that's watching this video, I ask that you let your words be a blessing to them. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Let me get a little drink, and then we're going to get to reading this, and we're going to go to the footnote. <clears throat> Happy Wednesday to everybody. Today is Wednesday. I'm pretty sure today is Wednesday. You know, I never know what today is, but today is Wednesday. I knew that today. Today is Wednesday, and we finna read about remembering your creator now while you are young, while you can still move, while you got some youth in your body, okay? Because if you live to get old enough, you're going to get old one day. 
Remembering your creator now. Verse 1. Ecclesiastic chapter 12. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. You're going to get old. If you live and get old, the Bible say one day you're going to say that you have no pleasure in life no more. Okay? While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of darkness, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out the window be darkened, and the doors shall be shut in the street. When the sounds of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the birds, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low, also then shall they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond trees shall flourish, and the the grasshopper shall be burnt, shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the street, or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken. Or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. I just read to you, uh, starting from the first verse of chapter 12, Ecclesiastic, all the way to the eighth verse. And the eighth verse said, Vanities of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. Then we go back to the footnotes where we just read, where this is telling us to remember God while we are young, to remember him and to obey him. And he was telling us that nothing else mattered but obeying God. He said nothing else, nothing else matter but obeying God. Okay. We have to learn to obey God. If we go back to the uh the English version, it tells us that res to respect and obey God. And he said that everything you were taught can be put into a few words. He said, but respect and obey God. This is what life is all about. God will judge everything we do, even what is done is secret, whether good and bad. God going to judge your secret things in your life. Things that you think is a secret that don't nobody know but you and God. You're going to be judged for that. You're going to be judged for that, okay? But if we go to the footnotes on 12, it tells us uh, that it said he encourages, no, right here. It say a life without God can produce a bitter, lonely, and a hopeless old age. A life without God. If you're living a life without God when you get old, who you going to have to talk to? Because you don't know God. You don't have him. So who are you going to have to talk to? Okay? It said a life without God can produce a bitter, lonely, and hopeless old age. A life centered around God is fulfilling, and it makes the evil days when disabilities, sickness, and handicap causes barriers to enjoying life. And that's what happens when you get old. Won't people treat you like that? When you get old, your bones will start to fail. When you get old... You can't walk as fast as you used to. When you get old, your sight going to start to fail you. When you get old, your heart starts slowing down. When you get old, you can't take them long breaths no more. Okay? So remember God while you're young, while you still got some youth. It says satisfying because the hope of eternal life being young is exciting, right? Being young is very exciting. I remember when I was young, it was exciting to me. I loved when I was young. 
I didn't know no better. I had not came into the knowledge of Christ. I knew of Jesus because I was taught and brought up in church. But I was young. And I hadn't got to know him for myself. But when I did, <laughs> my God, my God, he was not forsaken me. Y'all got to excuse that phone. I'm going to pause you. Okay, motivators, I'm back to continue reading and say, but the excitement of youth can become a barrier to closeness with God if it makes young people's focus on passing pleasures instead of eternal values. Did you understand it? It said that the excitement of youth can become a barrier to closeness with God if it makes young people's focus on passing pleasures, okay? Then it say, make your strength available to God when it is still yours, during your youthful years. He said, make your strength available to God. Make yourself available to God while you are still young, while you still got strength to work. Because the Bible said when it get night, when it get dark, no man can work. It's a spiritual thing I'm talking about now. Okay? It say don't waste it on evil or meaningless activities that become a bad habit. But makes you callous. He says seek God now. Seek him while he may be found. Seek him. Don't try to wait until you get bitter and lonely and, and, and at a hopeless old age and uh, when you become uh, sick, when you get disabilities and when you become handicapped. No, give God some time now while you got some youth in your body, while you can work for him. And then if we go on to... Uh, the footnotes on 6, verse 6 to 8, it explains to us the silver cord, the golden bowl, the pitcher, and the wheel. It says it symbolizes fragility, like you fragile, fragility, okay, fragility. It says how easy, easily death comes to us, how swiftly and unexpectedly we can return to the dust from which we came. Therefore, we should recognize life as a precious resource to be used wisely and not squandered frivolously. Frivolously. In verse 6 through 8, we read it. It say, or ever the silver cord be loosened, or the golden bowls be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return to God who gave it. Then in verse 8 it said, Vanity of vanities, said the preacher. All is vanity. Everything is vanity. If it don't got God, it's vanity. Give God some time while you still have some youth in your body. Don't wait till you get old where you can't do nothing but lay on the bed. Then at that time, all you can do is lay out and, and pray and cry out to God. And thank him for blessing you to live to see and giving you strength and life and health. Right now, if you go up, get up and do something for God, give your life to God, you can go work. In the vineyard, in the hedges, in the highways, in the byways, in the skyways. And when I say skyways, I'm talking about in the air. Even when you on the airplane, you can witness to somebody about the good news of God. Seek God while you're young. That's what they're saying to us. This is a very simple message. Then if we go on to uh, the footnotes on 79, it says stripped of God's spirit, our bodies return to dust, stripped of God's purpose, our work is in vain, stripped of God's love, our service is futile. We must put God first over all we do. We must put God first over all that we do. 
He said, all that we do. And in all that we do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then it say, because without him, without God, we have nothing. Knowing that life is futile without God. Motivate the wise person to seek God first. Thank you, God. Thank you for giving me a mind, a mind and a heart to seek you while I still have youth in my body. Thank God for his saving power. Thank God for the love of Jesus. Thank you. I thank you, God, right now for the love of Jesus. If it had not been for Jesus going to the cross for me, I would be done with it. It wouldn't be no me. It wouldn't be no you. We would be through. Continuing, it says, a gold also is called an, an, an ox gold was a sharp metal tip attached to the handle and used to keep oxen or cattle moving. That is a tool they used to use to keep the oxen and the cows going. They used to pop them with it. You know where to make them go. That's what it was. Then they say, like a gold, a wise world, a wise word or important truth might be unpleasant when first applied. But it will keep us moving in God's direction. And that is true. A wise word or important truth. It it says that it it um it is unpleasant when you first hear. Sometimes somebody come to you and they might be telling you something that's truthful, but it might be unpleasant to you. But it says, listen to this. It says. But it will keep us moving in God's direction. All we have to do is listen. Listen. Then it says there is no end of opinions about life and philosophies about how we should live. And they could be read and studied over. It is not wrong to study them. But spend the majority of your time feeding on the truth of God's words. Wisdom should lead to action. Wise students of the Bible will understand and do what they are taught. Because our time on earth is short. Our time on earth is short. Okay? We should use it to learn important truth. For they affect this life and eternity. Then he said in conclusion, Solomon presented his antidote. For the two main elements presented in this book, he gave an antidote. Listen to this. Those who lack purpose and direction in life should respect God and follow his principles for living. And those who think life is unfair should remember that God will, will review every person's life to determine how he or she has responded to him. He gave two antidotes, two antidotes, the two main elements, okay? Number one, he said those who lack purpose and direction in this in life should respect God and follow his principles. If you lack purpose and direction in your life, seek God, follow him, and apply his principles to your life. And then he said, those who think life is unfair should remember that God will review everybody's life, everything that they did to determine how he, she, me, or you have responded to him. Have you ever committed yourself, your life to God, both present and future? Does your life measure up to his standards? Answer that question in the comments for me if you got this far. If you don't, I know you didn't get this far. The question was, have you ever, have you committed your life to God, both present and future? And does your life measure up to God's standards? Do you think your life measure up to God's standards? The last footnote. 
it says. The book of Ecclesiastes cannot be interpreted correctly without reading these final verses. No matter what the mysteries and apparent contradictions of life are, we must work toward the single purpose of knowing God. In Ecclesiastes, Solomon shows us that we should enjoy life, but this does not exempt us from obeying God's command. Solomon let us know in the book of Ecclesiastes that we should enjoy our life, but we should not. But don't let this enjoying our life exempt us from obeying and following God's command and applying his principle to our life, a life that's not even ours. Oh, we think it's ours, but it's not ours. Okay? Then it says, we should search for purpose and meaning in life, but they cannot be found in humans. No, they can't. We should acknowledge the evil, foolishness, and injustice in life, and yet maintain a positive attitude and strong faith in God. And finally, all peoples will have to stand before God and be judged for what they have done in this life. We will not be able to use life inadequate, inadequate as an excuse for failing to live properly. No matter what you've done in life, you're going to stand before the judge and be judged. You're going to stand before the creator and be judged because we are the creation of the creator. And we're going to stand before him and be judged. And we cannot let things that we have done in our life be an excuse to cause us to fail to live for God. Then they say, we need to, number one, recognize that human effort apart from God is futile. Number two, put God first now. Number three, receive everything good as a gift from God. And number four, we need to realize that God will judge every person, every one of our life. Not one, two, not a thousand, not a million, but every one of our lives, everybody in this world, life, okay, whether it was good or evil, we're going to be judged by God. So let me say this to you again. Remember God while you still have youth in your body. Don't wait till you get old because you're going to be judged for everything that you have done in this life. We only got one life to live. When you take that last breath, this life in this world is done. It's over with. So how strange that people spend their lives striving for the very enjoyment that God gives us freely as a gift. Free. Salvation is free. It is free. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I wanted to share this with y'all. God put it on my heart. And I just wanted to share. And I just wanted to let you guys know. There is nothing better. Nothing. Nothing better. In the life that you're living now. Than to live a life. Pleasing God. Now God didn't say you was going to be perfect. He know you ain't going to be perfect. But you can live your life pleasing God. All you have to do is take it one day at a time and live a life that's pleasing unto God. And it can be done. I stand here to serve you notice. Oh, I'm still here, y'all. To serve you notice. To let you know that it can be done. You can live a life pleasing God. God know you're going to sin. He know you're going to make mistakes. He know you're going to have flaws. He know all of this. This is nothing new to him. We are human. We was made. We was created by God. So he know everything about us. He knew us before we was even conceived in our mother's womb. So spend your, don't spend all of your youth for life serving the enemy and not serving God. Give God some time while you are young. 
Because we have to remember, even the secret sins of our life is going to be judged by God. There's nothing you can hide from him. So don't think that anything that you've ever done is hidden from God because he's right there. He's right there. I'm trying to get the thing adjusted right quick. He's right there. He sees. He knows everything. He saw you when you snuck out the house when you was young and your mama told you don't go. He saw you when you took that cookie when your mama said don't eat no sweet. You got to eat dinner. He saw you when you disobeyed your teacher at school. He saw you. One moment. And I'm back. Now listen to this. He saw you when you had sex for the first time. When you made love, as you call it, for the first time. He know when you lost your virginity. He know every time you commit fornication. He know every time you committed adultery. And when I say you, I'm talking about everybody, man and woman. He knows it all. So the best thing to do is to repent of your sins, make it right with God, and let God direct your path and lead and guide your steps every step of the way. Because there is nothing hidden from him that he don't know. He know it all. He know when you had one beer. He know when you had two shots. He know when you smoked that weed. He know when you did drugs. He know it all. There's nothing that you think is a secret that God don't know. He knows your secrets. So give God, seek him while you still have youth in your body. Give him some time while you can still go out in the vineyard and out in the world and, and witness to people and compel sinners to him. God told us, he said, you do the planting and he'll do the increase. He going to grow up. It ain't up to us to grow up because if we had to grow somebody, they would never grow. I hope you got something out of it. Read the book. I would tell you to read the whole book of Ecclesiastes. Remember Ecclesiastes 3 tells you that there's a... Uh, Let's go to Ecclesiastes 3 right quick. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Everything has a time. There's a time for everything. Read that book. It breaks down. It lets you know everything. Everything has a time, a season, a purpose, and a reason. And then read Ecclesiastes 12. Remember God. While you still have youth in your body. I love you. Thank you for watching. Remember we are under one God. We are all under one God. One nation. One love. The Trinity. The Father. Son. And the Holy Ghost. We have peace. Because Jesus gave his life on the cross. That we may have peace. That we may have life. And have it more abundantly. This is what Jesus did for us. Who was we? Who are we? We are nothing. But guess what? We are something to God because we are his creation and he is our creator. And Jesus gave his life on the cross to bring us, the creation, back together to the creator, God. So now that we are back in line with God through the blood of Jesus, we can rest. God is holding us just like this. He got us. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I thank Jesus for that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to thumbs up the video. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe bell. Tap that notification button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys are having for dinner. Uh, what did you guys do today? Just let me know. Tell me something that's going on in your life. I love you. And I truly thank God for each and every one of you that watched this video. And this is our out prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we want to thank you for blessing us to come back 
to this platform once again. Lord, we ask right now that in the name of Jesus that you open up somebody's spiritual ears, to open up their mind, that you gave them a heart to receive and a mind to believe what the word is saying to them. And God, we ask that right now you touch somebody's heart. Somebody is sick on the bed of affliction. We ask that you heal, deliver, and set free. Somebody, the eyes need to be touched. God, give them back their sight, God. Touch the limbs of their body and allow them to operate functionally. In the name of Jesus, cover everybody with the blood and keep us all safe. And until you bring us together again on this platform, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you guys for watching. Remember that the giant in front of you, on side of you, and behind you can never, ever, ever, ever be bigger than the God that's in your heart. Remember, God loved you so much that he gave his one and only son, and I love you too, without my heart. And I thank each and every one of you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, leave me a comment down below, and God bless every one of you, and happy Wednesday. Peace. God bless.